Oh, what's up fellow nerds? I'm your host Dr. Mikkei and welcome back to my channel. In this video, I want to break down the Tauri's Naquida generator technology and go into detailed information of its development for you today in this video. All my information is sourced from the shows, wikis and extended materials as I include everything I can find online. But before we get started, if you like the content, please feel free to like, comment and subscribe for more. And with that said, uh, let's -a go. To begin this dive into the Naquida generator technology, we must head back to 1999 to when the Tauri encountered the Orbanians, a human race derived from the Mesoamerican culture on Earth. Their people were transported off Earth to Orban thousands of years ago by the Omeya Khan using the Crystal Skull Network, where they began to develop separately from Earth. Now, it's unclear on when, but during the thousands of years after arriving on Orban, the Gorwald attempted to conquer the Orbanians. However, the Orbanians purr a fight and fought back against the Gorwald and eventually drove them off Orban. And with the goal driven away, the Albanians would be left alone to continue developing. And in 1950, Earth year, the Albanians developed nanite technology and began using the nanites to increase the learning efficiency in children. And once a child has learnt all they can at the age of 12, the nanites would be taken out of the children and shared with the larger population, allowing for mass knowledge learning and sharing. This paved the way for accelerated technology advancements, and so the Albanians quickly passed the Tauri in technology, being a few decades more advanced by the time the Tauri encountered them 50 years later. In 1999, the Albanians encountered the Tauri and was excited to reconnect with their lost brethren from Earth. So to reconnect with Earth, the Albanians and the Tauri entered into a cultural exchange of information. The Tauri aided the Albanians with history and shared culture, while the Albanians would share their advances in technology, mainly the Naquida reactor technology, designed and built by the child Merin. Merin would bring a generator back to the SGC for Samantha Carter to study and explain how it worked. And after a process of detailed explanations and simplifying technical matters, Carter began to develop a prototype design of the reactor and began constructing one using Earth-made components. The outer design would differ drastically from the Albanians' small device, but the internal workings would be very similar to the Albanians' designs and would function the same. Carter and Merrin would complete the prototype and power it on, creating an energy wave, marking the device to be functioning in its proper manner. Merrin would then return to Orban to share her nanites with the rest of the population, but the Tauri would have the information needed from Merrin and Carter's prototype to begin further development of the Tauri's made Naquita generator. In the year 2000, the prototype Naquita generators are now being made and refined to the point they can be brought into the field for use with one practical use being to power the Stargate without the need for a DHD, in which was attempted on P2X416. But due to the events that unfolded on the planet, the reactor was left behind and not used. A year later, on P5S381, the Tauri provided one of the prototype reactors to the Incarans to power their settlement, with the generator being able to supply power for around one year before being depleted. The device performed its function well, but was later turned into a bomb by the use of a feedback loop, causing the reactor to overload. But before it detonated, it was transported into the atmosphere by the alien ship, where it, where it exploded with the force of a small nuclear bomb of kilotons. After this, the prototype reactor was doing really well in the field, being refined every time it was made to output more energy and lasting longer each time, being used more often for off-world missions for a portable, clean, long-lasting power supply, taken over for the more common combustion generators. 
but the design remained bulky and crude. So over the course of 2001 and 2002, with the help of Dr. Rodney McKay and Samantha Carter, along with the scientists from Russia and the US working on the Naquita reactor project for ARF usage, the reactor moved out of the prototype phase and into the Mark I production model. In 2003, after almost four years of further development of the Nakwada generator, the generator moved from its prototype phase to a production model for mass production and use. The Mark I model was more compact and streamlined, being easier to deploy in the field of world. The Mark I was developed by Dr. McKay, supervising a US-Russian joint project to develop generator technology for use on Earth with the Mark I being the main model of reactor going forward. The reactor project would still continue on by continuously improving the power output leading to the Mark II generators. However, the Mark I's would begin production en masse and be deployed to the SGC for off-world use. The Mark I model was small and compact, being transported in a big case by one person, making the reactor extremely portable and with the almost universal connections adapters it uses to connect the reactor to many other devices, Alien and Tauri, it was an all-round power supply of many uses, making it one of the Tauri's biggest technological achievements. But the Mark I was not just for being a portable power supply, it was also used to supply power to many off-world bases and be the primary power source of Earth's interstellar ships, with both the X-303 and BC-304 using the Mark I generators to provide main power to the vessels. Now, it's unclear if the ships used multiple generators or a single large one for main power supply, or a combination of both, but the ships did use Nakwada generators of Tauri design to power them. The Mark I would be continuously refined over the years to output more power over time and be extremely safe for use with many safety features to prevent overloads. It would also be miniaturized for the X699 directed energy weapon and be used for various other things like the Merlin's out of phase technology device. The Mark I generator would function very well without any problems going forward However, it was still limited with its power outputs, so the Nakwood Reactor project moved on to the Mark II generators to surpass the Mark I in power output. With the discovery of the ancient control chair in the ancient outpost on Earth, the need for a more powerful energy source was needed. This was due to the ancient's power source of a ZPM being extremely rare and impossible to replicate. So the Nakwada reactor project moved on to the Mark II generator project. This project was to achieve a level of power output to be able to use the control chair on Earth for defense without relying on a ZPM. And so in 2005, the development of the Mark II entered production and was tested on Earth's ancient chair showing that two Mark II generators are enough to power the chairs and drones for limited uses. And so, with this success, two generators were deployed to Atlantis during the siege, powering up the chair and the drones with varying success. The Mark II generator is capable of achieving up to 600% more output of the Mark I by operating at a state of barely controlled overload. And in this state of controlled overload, it rapidly drains the power of the device, shortening the amount of time it can be used for. The Mark II would be improved upon over time, achieving longer use, but due to the Mark II being rather large compared to the Mark I, and with the extreme methods of achieving the 600% more power output, the Mark II would only be a step forward in design and development. The Nakwada reactor project would continue on and make great achievements going forward. This next section is from the Stargate Atlantis Gateways comic book run and may or may not be canon. In 2009, the Nakwada reactor project had achieved a great feat. 
the Mark IV Naquadirt Generator. This generator was the same size as the Mark I generator, but had the ability to power the control chair on Atlantis, while simultaneously powering the city shields. It was even stated to be possible for it to power the entire city of Atlantis, being similar in power output to a ZPM, but not at the same level. This incredible feat for the Mark IV is an achievement for the Tauri, and to be the size of a Mark I is insane, but the reactor development didn't stop there. Also in 2009, along with the Mark IV, there was also a Mark VI generator, this time with potentially the same amount of power output of a ZPM. Now it's unclear on the level of power generation it can output due to not enough dialogue in the comic, but it does imply the power is equivalent to the level of a ZPM. The last Naquida generator on this list is the Alternate Futures Mark 12 Naquida generator, referenced in Stargate Atlantis's episode The Last Man. This generator was capable of powering Atlantis's shields for almost 48,000 years with the help from solar panels. The generator was developed in the 2030s and that about covers all the versions of the generators seen in Stargate. Now let me try and break down how they work. Now we know the types of generators, let's discuss how they work. A Naquida generator uses small amounts of refined Naquida in its reaction chamber and uses a controlled continuous explosive reaction to generate clean energy in the form of electricity. The generators are self-contained and portable, only needing that small amount of Naquida to function. It's unclear beyond that information on how they increase the power output of each model, and it's unclear on how much each generator can produce in power, being mostly what the plot of the story needs at the time. But I can speculate that the Mark I generator is equivalent to one or two nuclear power stations full energy output, but in such a small device, while being completely clean to the environment. This is just my speculation, just from observations of its description and uses in the show, and is highly debatable. Well, there we go, my fellow nerds. This has been a breakdown of the Tauri's Naquida generators, covering its many stages of development and origins. The Naquida generator is by far one of the greatest achievements of the Tauri and it allowed for many other technological advancements going forward. The need for clean, enormous power generation is a trope in nearly all sci-fi, with many using its own made-up elements like Naquida for Stargate or Dilithium for Star Trek, and it makes for very interesting stories. I can't wait to see what level of power generation we get in the new Stargate show, but going off what we already have within the Stargate franchise and with the comic Mark 4 and 6 generators, I believe the Tauri would have surpassed the ZPM's boundary by now. But what are your thoughts on this? Leave a comment below. And if you have enjoyed this video, please feel free to like and subscribe for more. I have been your host, Dr. McKay. Thank you all for watching. And until the next video, I'll catch you all then. Cheers and goodbye and have a good rest of your day. Bye!